live from Waterloo Studios in beautiful downtown Yukaipa. It's time for another episode of World's Cheapest Horror Movie Theater, starring Robert the Uncanny as the Ragman and Talkback Joe as the Alien Overlord. Written by Kevin Jones. And I'm your announcer, Jack Miahoff. And now we proudly present Ragman. The dimly lit street became as bright as day as the passing patrol car switched on the floodlight mounted on its roof. Joseph scrambled behind a massive pine tree that stood in the yard of the modest track house. He cursed under his breath as his large garbage sack full of aluminum cans clanked loudly together. He mumbled a little prayer that he would not get busted. He'd just been paroled from the state pen and he had no wish to go back there again. After what seemed like a lifetime had passed, the police car finally rounded the corner leaving the street. He quickly looked around. No lights had come on in the house. He let out a sigh of relief. Lately, the whole area had been like a police state. Local residents were up in arms about a 400% increase in unsolved burglaries. No matter how much the police patrolled, they could not prevent the wholesale theft of electronics and car parts. Joseph was about to go in search of more recyclables when he heard the garage door behind him open. The trespasser turned, expecting to be confronted by the home's irate owner, but what he saw was far more bizarre. A man that was nearly seven feet tall loaded car parts that he had torn from the sleeping family's sedan's engine into a shopping cart. The towering thief was wrapped from head to foot in a collection of mismatched rags, giving him the appearance of a modern-day mummy. The ragman pushed his shopping cart down the driveway past the pilferer without so much as a sideways glance. Joseph looked down at the filthy bag of recyclables in his hands. Somewhere, the strange burglar had a small fortune and electronic goods stashed away. If he could follow the ragman back to his lair, perhaps he could find a way to steal the stolen items from him. He ditched his pitiful haul of cans in the bushes and went after the cloth-wrapped thief. The ragman went into an old tool and die works that sat crumbling on the outskirts of town. The business had gone under years ago when the building was supposed to be vacant. Joseph could see lights on inside and hear the sounds of mechanical rumblings emanating from within. He crept in for a closer look. As he neared the building's entrance, he heard something moving behind him. As he turned, he saw the ragman's massive fist coming towards his face. It impacted with the force of a speeding 18-wheeler. His legs turned to jelly as everything around him went black. When Joseph came to, he felt himself being carried through the interior of the old tool and die works. As his eyes slowly focused, he saw a bizarre automated assembly line furiously constructing vast amounts of what looked like mechanical men. Joseph's gaze shifted to the ragman. Under the factory's dim lights, he could see gaps in his abductor's bandages. It was not human. It was a robot identical to the ones that were coming off the assembly line by the hundreds. Joseph was taken to the center of the factory. There he was dumped on the floor before a spacecraft that sat idle in the middle of the factory. A 12-foot nightmare creature from a distant galaxy stepped from the ship and dispassionately scrutinized Joseph 
for a few seconds before it made a dismissive gesture towards its robotic slave. This biological is of no use to us. Dispose of him. Joseph begged the otherworldly creature for his life as the ragman moved in for the kill. The intruder's pleas for mercy came to an abrupt halt as his head was ripped from his body. As Joseph's lifeless corpse fell to the ground, the rest of humanity remained blissfully unaware that very soon they too would share a similar fate.